I'm Angus Lowe, and I've been designing bridges at Arup since 1972. My name and my role at Arup are one and the same thing, that's the way I see it. Everyone knows me. <laughs> The first bridge I worked on was a bridge over the River Neen in Northampton. Um, and uh, no, I was sort of thrown in, slightly thrown in the deep end, um, but I was working directly with Robert Benheim, um, who was then leading one of the bridge design teams within Arup. I was literally sitting next to him and just learning all the time, and, um, and that really sort of sucked me in. It's not that you meet enormous challenges, it's just that you meet them every day. When you work with lots of other people, everyone finds different things in design. Many people, you know, they want to just move it forward and, 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 and see it all happen and things. And I must admit, I, my interest is in standing back and understanding at a sufficient depth to um, find the best solution. You find very, very few drawing boards around this office, but I still work at a drawing board. And it is, it's the blank sheet of paper um, before anyone has actually put anything down, thinking what it might be. Um, I, I find a big buzz in that because that is the challenge, um, not just moving on from what was done last time, but just trying to see the problem in its most abstract form and then see how shape comes out of the problem and then start drawing it. I, I do get asked from time to time who should design a bridge, uh, an architect or an engineer, and I sort of um, deflect it by saying bridges should be designed by bridge designers, by which I mean the important thing is that it's designed by someone who actually understands bridges, understands their role and relationship in, in the landscape and in society, and understands the, uh, uh, the constraints the, uh, in terms of building them, which is basically related to the engineering and construction methods. I, I, I say that design is a fundamentally intellectual exercise. It's making sense of lots and lots of disparate facts in, and marshalling them in a way so you actually understand them, often collecting them together on a big sheet of paper because a lot of them are spatial facts, um, and then uh, looking at it and seeing, reading the constraints within what you see, uh, seeing opportunities within what you see, uh, understanding what is different from the normal situation and often what's different gives you, there's, you know, within what's different there's an opportunity to do something better than you're normally able to do. I mean there was an interesting uh, situation in France um, about 15-20 years ago when Michel Villager built a cable stay bridge which was something like 60% longer than anything that had been built before and you know and it takes, um, it takes a brave engineer to do that. But once he'd done it, very, very soon afterwards, others followed with bridges which were just slightly longer than his. <laughs> we have actually, we, we do find odd moments and we do allow ourselves um, occasionally small budgets to study these things. And in particular, in the case of cable stayed bridges, which a few years ago were sort of, the longest ones were hovering around 450 metre span. And we, and now that there were two cable stayed bridges with more than a thousand meter span and we've been doing studies at 1500 meters and things and the, the scope for taking them um, you know, significantly further so there's no sense with cable stayed bridges that um, uh, we've hit a limit on the overall span. With suspension bridges um, there is with the suspension bridges there is a theoretical limit that you can write about it in somewhere around sort of you know, five or six kilometres. It's been fully designed so far is 3.3 kilometres. And um, really, once you start getting at those sort of spans, there is just an awful lot of steel in the main cables and there's a lot of cost. So basically it's cost that limits you. Once you start understanding the problem, you start finding that there's a sort of geometry that arises out of it. And the form almost sort of takes shape in front of you. And because of the sort of the purity of the problem, holding up a, a long span or something, the form itself uh, inevitably comes out in a fairly sort of um, dramatic, uh, in, in some dramatic way. Do we sort of consciously add additional drama? Well, you know, not, not usually. Usually we're, we're responding to the problem. With the Medway viaduct, 
which was the only significant sized viaduct on the, um, well certainly on the first section of the Channel Tunnel Railway. I think that working with the architect uh, Jim Eyre, we did actually achieve something that is beyond, beyond, the, you know, beyond the functional that is needed, um, that it has some sort of drama and excitement. And I think that people hopefully appreciate um, the efforts that we make to uh, provide something more than uh, just the minimum. And all you have to do in a city is to realise that if you build a bridge like the Millennium Bridge, not only do you build a link, but <clears throat> automatically, without spending any extra money, you generate a network of pedestrian routes and cycle routes on underused back streets right the way across the city. So the cost of building your um, you know, three or four hundred metre length of bridge and its approaches generates many, many kilometres without spending a penny. So you generate pedestrian routes, you generate cycle routes, and you generate expenditure and commerce. I always think the surprising thing to me is that people think that technology is changing, the materials are getting stronger and that's pushing things forward. And they are to some extent, but not a great deal. I mean, when I look at the material strengths and things that um, I was using when I first started in the 1960s, and I'm looking at what I'm doing now, um, the basic material strengths are really very similar. There, there, there hasn't been a big change in the materials. The change is in, is in the heads of the designers and the heads of the clients asking for more, and we respond.